I'm not gonna lie to you, I've gotten better intros in my life. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was the most fucking anticlimactic. <laughs> hey, welcome to this venue with four walls and a ceiling, so it has to pay property tax. <laughs> it is Bill, but that's like the fucking interview, that's like the intro I used to get at college gigs. And they'd have some fucking student go up there. They'd say your fucking name first. You're supposed to say the name last. Hey, fuck it, he's done, yeah, you done that, but bad, bad, please welcome uh, Billy Fuckhead, right? They wouldn't do that. They'd start it off. They'd just go, hey, a comedian, his name is tight, it's Bill Burr, spit out VH1, and here he is. They just walk on to nothing. I'm supposed to be ignoring you guys, like you're not fucking here. This is supposed to be the podcast. It's supposed to be in my goddamn bedroom. You guys are supposed to be the fucking chatter in my goddamn head. We'll see how long this works. How long you guys can stare at somebody laying on a leather couch, talking to themselves. I think this was from the Porno Hall of Fame, by the way. This is the original, the original one. You know, back when you could take your dick out, shake it in a woman's face, and there was no ramifications, you know? You didn't have to go on an apology tour for taking it out. You know, ladies, not for nothing, technically it is out. You know, it hangs off your body. So to just go that extra centimeter through your zipper, I really don't understand what the big deal is. Oh, they're sensitive here in Phoenix. Oh, somebody get him some water. I think they were in the sun too long. Is he advocating rape? Do I need to blog about this? Can I sit down in the middle of it and make it about myself? I literally saw two women on Twitter fucking talking about a topic they were sick of being asked about to each other on Twitter. It's like, hey, stupid, you guys ever consider exchanging cell phone numbers? Why, why don't you start with the DM? No? You guys all fucking millennials, so you discuss everything out in public? Just all has to be done. How great is that bomber in the van? I fucking love that guy. Jesus Christ. Talk about a guy just on a mission, you know? What do they, what do they call that shit when you, 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 you have to get your vision board? You just put everything that you want to happen. He had that all over his van. He's just like, Trump's the shit, fuck CNN. Everything that he visualized, it all came true until those meddling cops had to come in and ruin it. It's like a fucking Scooby-Doo episode of just like Shaggy snapped and fucking killed everybody else and forgot where he put his dog, you know? There was something very Hanna-Barbera about it. You know, he's politically active. Can you get mad at that? Um, <laughs> How could you say that in a post 9 11 thing and thing and thing? I think in today's climate... Somebody fucking asked me that one more fucking time. What's it like to do that in today's climate? What, we're one fat on? I used to walk around telling you what to talk about? Um, sorry, that was joke was just for me. It was just for me and I had the person's face right in my fucking head. And if you whisper nicely in my ear afterwards, I'll tell you who I'm talking about. Um, anyways, yeah. Everybody's gonna blame this fucking bomber, right? For do, having the American dream, right? The guy basically, he doesn't have two nickels to rub together. No one knows his fucking name. All he has is just a white van, right? Couldn't even afford something with color. Barely, it's just, it's just primer with the basic white. I'll take that. The vinyl seats, nothing in back. Just hearing his belongings every time he takes a turn, go from one side of the van to the other. You know? No woman in his life, she walked out, right? Yeah, she was believing in him. Till she got in the van and saw there was no more seats. And she's just like, oh, he doesn't want kids. I'm out. I can't lock this guy down. The best I'm gonna get is fucking alimony, right? There's gonna be no child support. That's where the money's at, right? You ask for six grand a kid. And then you feed them popsicles and get yourself some shoes. That's how you do it. That's how it's done in Arizona. That's why there's all these fake tits out here. That's why there's all these fake tits out here. That is all money that was supposed to be spent on children's education. And instead, women are using it. Trying to beef up their chest. Like, you know, 
like a bass fisherman putting a better fucking thing on the hook, right? The big fake fucking titty. Just waiting for some guy, a couple of scotches in in this fucking steakhouse, right? Had a good round of golf. Next thing you know, you bring those laminated fucking things out. What's he supposed to do, huh? Not be a guy? Right? So now he's got his dick out, but it's under the bar, right? So that's still legal. That's still, that's still legal in 2018, right? He don't have golf pants. He might as well have had it out anyways, right? That's why Pete Carroll wears the Dockers, right? He does. He walks around half hard during the game. That's why he always goes, woo, after a field goal. It's just a field goal. What are you so excited about? Oh, I got my Dockers on. Every time there's a breeze, little fucking wind shear. My pubes stand up at attention. You guys don't watch NFL films? Uh, <laughs> so anyways, this fucking guy's sitting there in this goddamn van, right? I love who he went after, too. I really did, you know what I mean? I don't know, just fucking around, but you know, now maybe celebrities will shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, these fucking idiots, they're sitting there spouting, and the Niagara Falls, every day over eight billion gallons of water are wasted. You could collect that water and pour it on poor children, and they wouldn't have, we could eradicate polio, right? It's just like, just learn your lines and go down to the set. Nobody gives, <laughs> you know, I didn't know who I was going to vote for in the last election until I heard somebody from, uh, what is it, My Favorite Martian? What's that show with the fucking nerds? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's fucking, there's three guys, there's a hot blonde and nobody bangs her. Big Bang Theory, yeah, the Big Bang Theory. Uh, somebody with three lines on that show really broke down fucking uh, the Iraqi war for me. I was like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if anybody remotely famous is listening to this, all you're doing, you're not changing anybody's mind. All you're doing is, is you're, you're, you're kick-starting the dreams of a man with a two-seater van in the middle of Florida. That's all you're doing. People are still going to vote who they're going to vote for. In what world does Robert De Niro actually get a bomb sent to his house? He's probably like, is this Martin fucking with me? Are we doing another casino? This can't be real. I mean... Come on, I'm just, I'm just an actor. No, no, no! You insulted him a little bit. You insulted him a little bit, you did. You fucking popped off your mouth. This guy's a bum, he's a mutt. I like to punch him in his face. They, they forget they do summer stock. It's like you play a tough guy. Other than that, you know? <laughs> this fucking 80 year old guy. Go get a fucking coloscopy and whatever the fuck it's called, right? <laughs> Speaking of which, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I turned 50 in June. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, so you know what that means now. Back in the day, you got a gold watch and a horny stewardess. That's what you got when you turned 50. Maybe a cube steak if you were in the fucking Midwest. But on the coast, you got a fucking stewardess from Pan Am, right? She rocked your fucking world, and everything was great. But now, not today's hashtag America. No, what do you get? What do you get? You get some fucking broccoli, this shitty tasting stuff, and you gotta get a colonoscopy. So I, I got one on, uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, I did. Can you get it? Obviously I'm not dying or I wouldn't have brought it up. Uh, yeah. All I was doing, I just kept making jokes about it, because that's all you can do as a guy, right? I just kept saying to my wife, I just kept saying, uh, hey, remember, you gotta give me a ride to and from, right? And I just kept calling it the, the Jacques Cousteau of the asshole. <laughs> Literally, a fucking camera crew, like the shooting B-reel. <laughs> right up your ass, right? So, no, I just had to like joke my way through it. That's the only way to do it. It's just so fucking weird. Especially this Me Too thing where it's all about, not, you know, not letting somebody knock you out while you don't have your fucking pants on. Like, I'm literally walking into this thing. I was just waiting for Bill Cosby to come in with, like, his struts on and shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, so I just kept singing stupid songs about it. Remember Edie Brickell in the New Bohemians? Yeah, that's why I just kept singing. Coloscopy! Let's <laughs> talk on the cereal box. Thomas Pritchard played drums for Mars Volta. Ah, one, one Mars Volta fan. Uh, so, anyways, 
Yeah, so it's actually, you know, if you're of that age and you're supposed to go, the only reason why I did it was because I had a kid, you know? If I didn't have a kid, you know, I would have been happy to just fucking just keep going like Vince Lombardi. I didn't drop when I was 62. You know, my wife could figure it out. She's a big girl, you know? She got the kid, you can, you gotta do the right thing, so. You know, whatever, so. The hardest part, if there's any guy in here putting it off, like, I ain't doing that, I ain't have no guy, look up my fucking ass, you know? One of those old school homophobic guys, right? Maybe he's saying do up around a burning trash can. Came you know, okay, this close to being in Frankie Valley in the four seasons. You could have one of those four seasons, right? <laughs> Ain't having no guy shove no fucking camera up my edge, you right? I don't swing like that. Um, it's just the stuff you have to drink and what it does to your fucking body. That's, that's the only part. Other than that, you just go there. You know, and then you just, they put this, this fucking thing on you. And they, like, you know what freaked me out is they, like, 50 times, they, they go, we just gotta ask you a couple more questions. They ask me everything. After a while, it's like, how many more fucking questions? Like, you know, like, how little confidence do you have in your ability here? Like, if, if you're getting on a plane with some guy, and he's the pilot, he'd be like, how much do you weigh? And you're like, all right, fuck 85, all right, cool. You get air sickness? No, no, I don't, I don't, cool. It's up. hey. How much did you say you weighed? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they kept doing. I'm just like, do you guys like not want to fucking do this today? Because I don't need to be here. You can fucking take this thing out. I'm fine. So no, you literally just get there and they just put this shit on you. I'm not going to tell you. They, they tell you to lay on your side. Which is really, that's the only bad part. You lay on your fucking side, trying to keep the drapes closed. Yeah, and then you just, you, just, you just can't give in. You just take two deep breaths, and that's it. And then it feels like a second later, you just wake up, and the person's just like, all right, you're good. You're not going to die. <laughs> See you in five years. And then, you know, and then I recommend not talking, because you're still under the influence of whatever the fuck they have there. <laughs> you know, like, I really like your watch. You know what I mean? That's it really, is that Rolex? Yeah, I had it buried in your fucking colon about a minute ago. Oh. So anyways, I, uh, I'm going to game four. Right now, for those people Woo! listening to this stuff. Yep, the Go people listening, I, that's right. I am in Phoenix, Arizona right now. And I'm going to game four of the World Series. Now everybody here remembers the World Series. When you guys won one in 2001, right? What, 2002? 2001, that's right, 2001, that's right. Because it was 9-11, and everybody was like, oh my God, we feel so bad for New York. You're like, well, what about us? What about us, you know? You don't feel bad for us, you know? Colorado River is uh, it's running dry. We don't like Martin Luther King. Um, Barry Goldwater, I mean, no, no fucking love down here. You went down there and you beat him. You beat him. You made Arizona happy and the rest of the country sad. And that is why, to this day, to this day, the championship fairy has not come around and tapped you on the head ever since. Until you guys apologize for your blatant disrespect. Of all the victims of that, and I'm not talking about the people that died that day. I'm talking about the people that watched it on television and made it about themselves. All of those people. Oh my God, I was in Connecticut. Um, and I just feel like for me, I didn't even want to leave my house. Well, don't, sweetheart. Don't leave the house. Turn on the stove and hide in there. Why don't you do that? Oh, Why would you say that? You're trying to be a better man. I'm not aware of too many things, except I don't have ass cancer for the next five years. <laughs> Judging by the uncomfortable laughs, there's a lot of guys in here that need to go and get that fucking procedure. <laughs> Some woman there. That's right. That's why men kill their wives, sweetheart. Right there. That's rare. There was a video game of lives you have left. There's only so many times you'd be like, That's right. After the guy says what he needs to do, you still gotta pile on with that little fuck right as we go to leave. 
Yeah, okay, you're right, okay, about that. Well, good, maybe next time you should think, bitch! Fucking bitch! I agree with you. You just gotta get that one last word in. And you know why that is? Because so many of them have never been punched in the nose. And that's what it is. That's what it is. No, it makes you a better person. You survive it. it makes you better, it makes you think. Ooh, ooh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I should just sit here and enjoy my tea. Um, is he advocating domestic violence? Yes! <laughs> There's too many people. I don't know how to get rid of people, but domestic violence seems to be a way. <laughs> um, all right. What else? Yes, I'm going to go to uh, game four. Now, I don't know how the game's played out here with Phoenix people. I never really been to a game where I was wearing the opposing team's jersey. I don't know you guys are in there. I mean, women just, you know, go to college here in like bikinis and shit. Like, you guys don't really think like seriously, do you? You, know, you either are rich or your parents are gonna be rich. Or you're one of these zombies right outside the club here that come out and, like... This really is one of the most underrated, scary downtowns that I've been to. Like, I had no one, and it, it is like in a fucking instant. The second the work day's over, it goes from Maybury <laughs> to like Night of the Living Dead. I mean, it is like fucking terrifying how quickly. It's weird, because once you know that that happens, it's like during the day, you got to squint your eyes to look through the matrix of all these happy people with places to go home to. And you, oh yeah, yeah, this is on, there's a homeless guy, you know? You know what it is? It's not the homeless. It's not the drug addicts. It's, it's the legit crazy people. They really scare me, you know? And uh, I can tell you, when I was a kid, you didn't see that, you know? I mean, you saw like homeless people, you saw junkies, but you didn't see this fucking Shutter Island shit <laughs> walking down the street, like legit, like Mike Myers type fucking people walking down the street. That's because when I was a kid, they used to have nut houses. And if you were crazy, you got sent to the nut house and your parents, they didn't protect you. They were just like, yeah, get him out of here. He's fucking crazy. He came at me with the fork. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Shut your mouth. No chicken all the king for you, right? And you were gone. No, back then people had like eight or nine kids, so they didn't mind if the state came by and took one, right? And then they took them out to these places. Yeah. That was the original ending to the Waltons. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. That's why they call that show Eight is Enough. They had a night. Dick Van Patten was like, take, get one of these bitches, get into a fucking nut house. Chose one of the women too, because that's back when you could be proud of having a son. He's gonna carry on my name. You didn't have to act all beta now, right? Tucking your junk behind your thighs, right? This is the world we live in. Like, that is such an absurd thing I just said, and every guy in here got scared to laugh at it. Like, that's how nervous people are. If my wife asked me to tuck my junk behind my thighs, I would absolutely do it because she is a strong woman and I support her. Do I still have my job? Did I say the right thing? Am I still... Can my dreams still come true? I was talking about crazy people. This is literally how the podcast goes, people. It's just, just me meandering from one subject to another. Um, that's all right. Okay, there was one smattering to people. I don't know if she was doing that or she was making like a pizza crust. And she was just banging down the flour. Um, yeah, but you know what happened. A few younger people, right? At some point, I probably do have to stand up a little bit just so you guys can fucking see what's going on here. The younger people, um, the same person, same woman. There's one woman that is excited about this show. And the rest of you, I've lulled into my podcast energy. No, like when you were, uh, you know, when I was a kid, there were like nut houses. But what happened was uh, the people who worked at the nut houses were fucking the patients. You know what I mean? Well, you know the deal. There's no, nothing better than a crazy person in bed, right? So they, that was just an entire hotel of it. They couldn't resist. So they were just knocking them out right and left. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going harder. The, the more serious that you take this. I don't know what... Well, then fucking come along for the ride! You're all sick.
spitting on your fucking comedy hands. Tee hee, hoo hoo, ha ha. I'm gonna go further, and it's like, yeah, like like you're not in the vehicle with me. Get inside, for Christ's sake. Take a fucking ride. <coughs> Didn't you guys get any inspiration from that fucking bomber? That guy really he made it come true. He'll be he'll be out. I say 11 years. He comes out, and he'll be like co. He'll be a co-anchor. <laughs> on, on CNN. They'll bring him on CNN. Like when Vegas catches a car counter. And after they're done breaking his hands, like, all right, you want to work here and try to catch other pieces of shit? All right, all right. They're going <laughs> to... Anytime there's a fucking psycho, they're going to wheel this guy on and go, well, if I had to guess, I'd say his van is white and there's uh, no seats in the back. Back to you, Ellen. Um, yeah. You have to forgive and forget. I just think it's amazing that he was able to make all those bombs and not blow himself up, you know? <laughs> think of how messy you get making a fucking meal in the kitchen. This guy's doing the same thing with a bomb. How nervous are you when you go on the internet and you're Googling how to make a pipe bomb? <laughs> Trying to like throw enough other shit in there so the FBI throws him off the trail like... Pipe fitter class is the bomb. <laughs> you gotta scroll like 10 pages deep till you find some pipe fitter that, oh, here's another thing to do with plumbing, not to say to do it. Right? I don't know. I want to be on the dark web. Can you imagine? That's when you gotta really feel creepy. Your wife's asleep in the other room. You know? Your kid's sleeping with the little noisemaker of fucking birdies and shit, you know? <laughs> and you're in there in the dark web. Do you just immediately, does your soul just go into the fucking computer? I've always wondered that. Like, the internet isn't enough for you. There's not enough fucked up shit. You can literally see beheadings. Somebody's taking the head and sticking it in somebody's ass. You know? This internet, it's just not, you know, it's just not doing it for me. My tolerance is just so fucking high. I need something darker. These ISIS videos, I mean, why don't you just put on fucking Bugs Bunny? I, I, I can't handle this. You got anything darker? It's like watching somebody from Scotland coming over here drinking a beer. Well, oh, it's fucking weak piss and it was fucking... Oh, well, maybe it isn't. I don't know. I have no idea how much I bomb on my podcast, so I come out here and I talk fucking live. Uh, all right. So I flew out here. Um, first time I flew a helicopter since, like, August. And I had, I had like, yeah. I remembered how to do it. Uh, and two, my two best fucking landings I've had in a long fucking time. Landed that fucker like a goddamn daisy. And, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Usually I get a little fucking little happy on the fucking, on the footies there. You know what I mean? Especially if there's a tailwind. I'm like, oh God, if there's a guy guiding you in, that's when you get nervous. He's bringing you in. And then he tells you to, you know, to set the fucking thing down. He's like, oh fuck, he's watching me. He knows I'm gonna be new. It's like Greg Brady back in the day. Gotta beat Marsha. Gotta get closer than a quarter of an inch. 40-year-old sitcom reference. Woo! Thank you. Maybe even 50. Set it down like a champ. So then we fucking, we were in Blake. So we walked into this little airport and there's these two fucking old timers just sitting there like they're gonna do a wine cooler commercial from back in the day. <laughs> Their legs crossed, smoking fucking cigarettes. They're playing fucking crapped out. And they're just sitting there like, they're not nervous, these guys, you know, these guys fucking probably flew biplanes back in World War I, so they're not scared of shit. We're like, how's it going? They're like, eh, you know, not so good, yeah. <laughs> fucking engine cut out on us, but you know, whatever, they're, they're smoking cigarettes, you know, like their flip-flop blew out or some shit. So we get to gas the fucking thing up, and we're done gassing up, now we're gonna go back up to the helicopter and start it up, and this fucking asshole pulls up in his little Cessna, nice plane, and he parks right next to us. So now he can't start us up because, you know, with the, uh, the wind you create, then you can flip his thing over. So we just say to the guy nicely, we say, hey man, we're, uh, we're, we're taking off here, and he just looks up at us, he goes, yeah, I'm fueling up. 
He just walked away. Dude, he was such a dick. It was like, it's like I didn't know that somebody in real life was that much of a dick. It was like an 80s coming of age, like level dick. Like, I, I was like, am I in a bar in a Steven Seagal movie? Did that guy just like, was it that level? There was three of us and one of him. Hey, we're taking off. We're taking off. He just goes, yeah. I'm fueling up. Turned his back to us. And fucking, he didn't have a ponytail. He had a ponytail. I had a fucking Steven Seagal. I ain't fucking with that guy. And he wasn't. He was just some fucking dick. And I just, I don't know. He was just such, he was such an asshole that I, I actually liked him. I was like, no, I, was like, I can't get mad at that. That guy, like, no, anytime I meet somebody, if they're the real deal. You know what I mean? You see a guitar player, you just see the way he holds the guitar, the way he plays, his tone, you're like, that guy's the real deal. Even if I don't enjoy his music, I respect the guy. And it goes anything, you know? A bomber, some guy being a dick. It's just like, yeah, I mean, that guy, he went all in. That guy, you know, to fucking make a pipe bomb, have a white van, have your whole manifesto on the fucking window, you know? There's no auto-tune in that. He's not singing to a track. That guy is the real fucking deal. That guy would have tried to kill people in any era. In any era. He wasn't doing it for the likes on Instagram. He wasn't trying to insert himself into a situation. <laughs> you know, I came up with a bit the last time I was here because when I was scared about the... Uh, about the fucking, uh, the zombies coming out. <laughs> I was working with Verzi, and uh, it was like a quarter to five. We're like, fuck, we gotta get something to eat. You know, before, you know, before, you know, we, we become a part of the menu here, right? <laughs> so we went into that place that's like right next door, this sandwich place, you know, it's one of these places just, you know, those straw paper on the floor. You gotta wipe the table off with your sleeve, you know? <laughs> Just one of those places where it's like, do I really want to eat here? And it's like, well, I don't want to fight zombies. So yeah, I'm gonna get something to eat. And I remember we were sitting there and uh, this lesbian came walking in. Okay. Right? Always gets quiet when I say that. <laughs> People always act like, well, hey man, like, how did you know she was a lesbian? How did, how did you, you just look, how did you know she was a lesbian? Well, the same way you do. Right? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I look at you, sir, and I can tell you're a duck puncher. I see your beard and your baseball hat, you know? This guy here is good at physics, you know? You look like a Corvette guy, you like pizza. I don't know, you know, you make judgments. You make judgments. Asian guy, not gonna say good at math. Judging by your physique, you have too many white friends and you're eating too much of the American diet. Bam! Nailed another one. See that? But none of that shit was said in a bad way. Nothing wrong with duck hunting, physics, Corvettes, or being an Asian guy, you know, having a couple of white friends that introduce you to the wrong foods. You know? You gotta get back to the bok choy, dude. I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta stay away from the white flour. If you ever wondered why white people are so evil, that's what it is. It's coursing through our veins. It's the glue. Yeah. Everybody thinks it's the white privilege. It isn't. It's the glue. You just went back. That's not true. Because before GMOs, why, I, we, white people were even worse. When we had the best food on the planet, right? Johnny Appleseed days? You literally whitewash a fucking fence for an apple. Like that was a dessert. Remember Tom Sawyer? Oh boy, oh boy, I paint this whole fence, I get a fucking, I get an apple. He was in great shape. That's why they were so shocked when he died. So he didn't have a fucking ounce of fat on him. He was so skinny, he went to his, whole, he went to his own funeral. You know, that's the level of skinny that most women aspire to be. You know, be so skinny they can be at their own funeral and nobody sees them. And then they can see how much people cry and they care about them. You know? Yeah.
Yeah, and they're so dedicated, they are. That's why there's a couple of empty seats here right now. There's probably a few out back. The mere sight of a dumpster. It's just an involuntary reaction. Are you making fun of this eating disorders? Yes! <laughs> Do I want it to happen to you? No, but it is a subject. I'm sorry, if you thought that was funny, I just, I, that's where I draw the line. When it's something that affects me, that's where the line is. If it's the Asian guy with white friends, I don't give a shit. That's hilarious. That is funny to me. Is it lonely as an Asian guy in Arizona? You know, all these white guys walking around on the golf course, you know? <laughs> they think you're on the pro tour trying to get a lesson? Uh, sorry, it's a really white state. You guys earned it. You fucking earned it, all right? I know you guys treat minorities here. I know you do. Just, just look at the Grand Canyon and keep it moving. All right, isn't that how it is out here? I heard Trump's on your state flag next year. Is that gonna happen? I don't know. Oh, oh, Jesus. No? No? Come on, happy you voted for him. You don't like him? Why don't you like him? He's gonna make your fence even stronger. He's doing something for you. Oh, God. I, you better hope he doesn't hear this podcast. They can't imagine the tweets he's gonna send. Terrible state. Wouldn't be surprised if there's white fans headed there right now. <laughs> sad. Very sad. <laughs> All right, how far into this shit show am I? Jesus Christ, it's flying. It's flying. All right. Did I say everything here? Dick at aviation. Red Sox, fat fuck. That was talking about me. We gotta get, get back on it. Gotta get back on. I'm gonna get my fucking abs. I'm gonna be that creepy guy, over 50, wearing a half shirt. Ladies, uh, check it out. Uh, <laughs> you're into fucking salt and paprika pubes. Just go to south. Oh, shut up. It's not my fault you're eating. Bomber <laughs> bin. All right, let's get to the questions. By the way, everybody, thank you so much for coming out. So this is the second. This is the. This is the only, uh, this is the only city I've ever done a live podcast in. This is the second time I've done it. That's right. Because you guys, you guys are great people. You know, like those liberals in California. <laughs> Tell us what we want to hear. All right. All right. L.A. L.A. sports fan. I wear the blue shirt to bring out my eyes. <laughs> All right, it's a stretch from my hairline. By the way, I'm telling you, dude, I'm gonna get the fucking hair plugs. You wait, the next time I come here, I'm gonna have a rusty lion's mane. I'm, I'm gonna look fucking, I'm not what? Oh, he's a shy heckler? What's that? The hair plugs aren't thin enough yet. What do you mean they're not thin enough? We were talking about it last night on the podcast. No, I was saying they weren't good enough yet. They're not good enough. Yet. Good enough? You said thin enough. Are you trying to give everybody a fucking body image in here? After I just talked about women puking behind a dumpster and gracefully walk my way out of that, you lead me right back into that, sir? Is that what you do? Walk your way out. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. She's going to fucking choke you out. Don't dump me. Right. Everybody stand down. How do you think it's safe? All right, LA sports fan. Uh, hey, do you think those doctors, when they give you a colostomy, they, they like tag the inside of your colon? <laughs> you know, they know who you're going to next. They just write, what's up, Mike? Um, sorry. If anybody was involved in the procedure, I want to thank you for your professionalism <laughs> and not for feeding the inside of my digestive tract. <laughs> All right, LA sportsman. A lot of shit jokes on this one, people. Sorry. All right. Hey, uh, hey Billy Redface. Oh, that's where you guys get to, you get to watch me read out loud. I can't even fucking see anyone. 
Hey, Billy Red Sox face. I'm tired of you East Coast cunts coming to my city and talking shit about the sports culture. Uh, you know what's worse than the LA sports culture? All of you from out of state who move to Hollywood and soak up everything about the lifestyle out here. Oh, you mean dominate the entertainment industry? Sorry. But walk around with your Red Sox hats on talking shit about the sports culture. Dude, you guys earned it. They're the fucking worst. Dude, I used to wear wet sh Red Sox shit to Yankees games at the height of the curse of the bay. All they, would, all they would do was break balls. That was it, and if you laughed about it, then you were cool anyway you're from, but blah, 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 and then they'd say something about how do you like them apples, and it was over. Yeah, out, out in LA, like they literally, yeah, they, they, they like beat up a dad with this kid standing there until he dies of brain damage, and this guy's actually, since you guys making fun of the sports culture. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess, I didn't mean to offend you, by bringing up the Locked fact that you murder fathers with children at baseball games. No, you're right, you're absolutely right. I should lighten up and be a little more respectful. Um, speaking of which, I won't be wearing any Red Sox shit to game four. Won't be, anyway. Anyway, I might even wear this Dodger blue fucking t-shirt and silently root for the fucking Red Sox. Anyway, he goes, so what? That's what he said, so what? Some guy was put into a coma a few years back. Parentheses and eventually died for being a Giants fan. But that's a one in a billion chance. Grow a pair and shut up. There is nothing worse than Red Sox fans, period. Everyone in sports agrees. Let's go Los Doyers. Uh, that's fucking hilarious. Everyone agrees. <laughs> I'm a seventh grade girl. This is my, everyone here will fucking say it. Um, hey man, you know, if, if you're all right with, uh, you know, killing a dad in front of his children, then I mean, who am I to go to your state and say that that's not the way you're supposed to do it? Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Stop a fucking dad's head in front of his kids. He wore giant gear and that's what he did. It's fucking it his goddamn fault. If his kids cry, it's a shame. Better now. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous, man. They should lighten the fuck up. Everybody acting like they're fucking tough. You're not tough when you beat up a dad with kids. Do I really have to say that? In 2018, what sort of climate is out there it's unreal. You can't take your dick out of work anymore, but you can stomp a dad at a baseball game. I mean, I just, I will never understand Hollywood. I just, I just, maybe it isn't for me. Maybe I should go back east where things make a little more sense to me. All right, we've had everything. We've had anorexia, we've had deaths. I think this has been a good podcast. Uh, all right, we're coming, in, we're coming into the home stretch here. Number two, girlfriend compares me to her ex. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> hey, Billy White Nuts. What color are your nuts? I always thought they were purple. Um, like a bunch accidentally rolled out. I always thought it would just look like, you know? I just thought it'd be purple. I don't know why. Uh, my girl, some woman like that. Woo! Yeah. That means she grew up watching Barney with an absentee father. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, the wires got crossed. I don't know. Um, all right. Hey, I got to turn this way. Hey, Billy White Nuts. My girlfriend sort of told me that I don't spoil, spoil her like her ex did. Well, you just found out why he fucking left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus Christ, how big's the red flag gonna fucking be? You need a band to come through your living room? Nah, 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 she's a cunt. All right, uh, grab your shit and get the fuck out now before she gets pregnant, blame you. And all your fucking dreams die, two, three, four. All right, a couple of days ago, now you're in a fucking white man with no seats. Um, a couple of days ago, we had a little argument and she was like, oh, he used to make me bubble baths, take care of me in every way possible. 
always made sure I was okay in everything. He goes, keep in mind, Bill, I've only known this girl for like two months only. Well, I would have been like, well, then why don't you go back to him? He sounds like a great guy. What did you leave him for and get with me, you fucking moron? Now, are you gonna blow me or what? How about I put some of the bubble bath in my pubes? I would just be beyond fucking rude to her. She's being rude to you, right? Hey, where does your ex-boyfriend live? How about I pay for the Uber and you fucking go over there and you tell him this. Would you like to watch Netflix or go over to his house? Anyways, when I asked her about the details, she'd just say, it's okay, I guess it's not in your culture. What? Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what, did we just jump some racial borders there? Has anybody ever said that to you, sir? It's okay, I guess it's not in your culture. And what does that mean? Never mind, and then they do a secret white guy handshake right in front of you. <laughs> Can you really sleep peacefully as an Asian in, 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 in uh, Arizona? Is there a way to do it? Do you, do you have like a fucking a panic room that you go into? <laughs> Close the door. Um, anyways. Anyways, what should I do? I try my best to be a great boyfriend, but this shit just made me feel like I'm not doing enough. Any advice? Yeah, get some fucking self-esteem and, and kick her to the curb. Yeah. This is what you gotta do. The next time she says that, everything that she brought up, I would buy at CVS. Bubble bath, candles, all of that. I'd put it in a gift bag and just hand it to her. Just say, go ahead, go ahead. Go over to your fucking ex-boyfriend's house. I got some condoms in there. Or if he doesn't like you, go home and finger yourself to the memory of whatever you've been talking to me about. Because evidently, that is your fantasy, and I am not it. So see you later, sweetheart. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you gotta kick her to a curb. That's it, kick her to the fucking curb. All right, it's number three. All right, advice. Neighbor thinks I robbed his house. <laughs> All right. I'm guessing that the end of this story is gonna be on cable channel 249. A couple of months. Wherever they run cops or first 48. It was a peaceful neighborhood. Everybody got along. Um, Dear Billy Burr, last week a police officer came to my door early in the morning and asked me if I had heard anything unusual the night before. I, I would have been like, no. Like what? You mean the sound of an axe going through somebody's neck? What the fuck are you doing here? Who died? Am I a suspect? Well, then I'm going back to bed. That's the thing I learned in the first 48. All you have to say to the cops is, am I being charged with anything? If yes, I want a lawyer. If no, I'm gonna leave. You know? But you can't do that in real life. You can't do that in real life because the cameras aren't on. They just beat the shit on you. Like, all right, all right, I did it, I did it! I did it! Get off, get off me! Get off me! Some cop's gonna write it. Actually, there are cameras. There's cameras with everything we do. And you know what? It's not for you. It's to protect us! To pull the allegations! Um... And if you're a cop and you're listening to this and I irritated you, that is the point of this podcast. I already, I already dealt, no, nothing against cops. It's equal opportunity. From bulimia to police visibility, whatever the fuck it is. Um, anyways, he told me that my next door neighbors had been robbed and that I should keep my eye out for suspicious activity. Uh, like what, somebody in a cat suit with fucking wire clippers? <laughs> What about somebody drunk in a kiddie pool, like the alcoholic on the other side of me, huh? Is that suspicious, or is that just sad? Um, my neighbor, let's call him Phil, is going through a nasty divorce and is known to be unstable, but not dangerous. I don't know, I don't know if I would go with that. Unstable is dangerous to me. That, that, that unstable lives in dangerous house. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of another fucking thing like that. He's, he's violent, but doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, 
He only tortures animals. Um, something about four legs he doesn't like. You're, you're in the clear. Just go over there and ask him what kind of mood he's in. All right, he stays up all night drinking and replete, repeats a lot of monotonous tasks like washing his car every day for hours on end. I think this guy's on meth. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. He lives alone, doesn't work, never leaves his house for anything but groceries and doesn't date women. Hey, there's nothing wrong with being gay. Why don't we kind of, oh, sorry. I know his daughter's from high school, and he always asks me how they're doing, so I assume he has no contact with them. Jesus Christ, you still talk to this fucking guy? I feel bad for him. Ah! Oh, oh, this guy's gonna be a victim. I feel bad for this unusual, unstable, but not dangerous person who washes his car every hour and has no relationship with his own children. Do you think I should bake him a loaf of bread and bring it over? Yeah, why don't you just slit your wrist and jump in a fucking alligator pit, you fucking moron. I'm being, I'm being extra mean here, just to make you guys laugh. I don't need to be doing this. I feel bad for him, so sometime I go to his house. The first thing I thought about was that woman that went over to that woman's house when she said her monkey was acting weird and ripped her face off. Like, what are you doing? Did you go over there with your night vision goggles so you could follow him into the basement? So, so sometimes I go to his house to try his cooking and listen to him ramble on about things. I mean, how do you, like, where is the sympathy in this story for this person, you know? It's like every time I see a frosted bicycle right next to a freeway. Like, oh, what happened? Oh, you rode your bike in traffic, you fucking moron. I'm um, sorry. I think a lot of people know people that died on bicycles. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying it's not a tragedy. It's avoidable. Public transportation. Uber. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's a nice guy with good intentions, but he can, be, he can be pretty overbearing. I find myself going out of my way to avoid him because he's always in his driveway and wants to have drawn out conversations regularly. Yeah, well you fucked up, you went over and talked to him. <laughs> Crazy people cannot see you until you talk to him. You could have just walked by him, literally playing a fucking tuba, and it just blends in with the shit in his, his head. The second you talk to them, then they just, they just, they, you're all they can see. He's gonna cut you up soon and stick them in that bucket and start fucking washing you every day instead of his car. Anyways, I can tell he's offended by this. Now nah, you pissed him off. But I work two jobs and often generally don't have time to stop and chat. Oh yeah, anybody, anybody who's ever dated a psycho, you cannot, you cannot slowly back your way out of the relationship. You have to, you have to vaporize. You have to just fucking... They live in Tampa, you have to go to Eureka, California and be off the grid. You gotta like go to Colorado and become like a kayak instructor. Um... <laughs> Anyways, my sister goes to, to, goes to school with his youngest child, who apparently had been telling the kids in their class that Phil had been held up at gunpoint and zip-tied to a chair in his place during the alleged robbery. You sure the guy just wasn't jerking off? Some sort of autoerotic, self-imposed something or other? I don't know. That seemed absolutely preposterous to me. We live in a neighborhood of nice upper middle class condos in the suburb, and it's very easy to hear everything that's going on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Like, one of the keys in robbing a place is to be quiet enough that people don't hear you. Do you think robbers are just loud? And people get robbed in the, in the inner city because of all the, the, the fucking construction in the subways? And it doesn't happen in the suburbs because it's so quiet out? Anyways, that seemed absolutely anyways. I voiced my doubt to my sister and left it at that. Fast forward to today, a little over a week ago, my sister tells me that people at her high school are saying I was the one who robbed him. I was not only shocked, 
but angry that my sister had to hear it from kids in her class. Oh, now this person's losing their cool. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe you're the crazy one. This is like a great movie. They led me all the way down this road and wait a minute. You see dead people and you're dead? Um, <laughs> I haven't seen Phil the entire week since it allegedly happened. His car is in the driveway and I can tell that he's home. I love that now this person's acting fucking crazy and is spying on them. This all started because you went up and you felt bad. Oh my God, I feel bad. Let crazy people be crazy, all right? Let the orderlies handle them, all right? Bring the fucking shirt, wrap his arms around him. Yeah, bring the adult swaddle, the fucking straitjacket. But anyways, he hasn't left his house. Do you think he is suspicious of me? Or could it be it was just a rumor that kids let get out of hand? I'm considering knocking on his door and asking him if he thinks I robbed his house. This can't be real. But I don't want to do it on the grounds of some kid I don't even know said so. What should I do? I am at this fucking ship set sail, dude. Like, this is, uh, I don't know. What, uh, you know what? This is like, I got it, I got it. This is like fucking who wants to be a millionaire. I'm gonna phone a friend and ask this crowd. There's, there's too much legal liability here. All right. Okay, so, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring different scenarios. One, all right? If you think he should just continue or she should just continue to ignore this person and hope that this whole fucking thing just dies of its own weight and gradually goes away, uh, let's hear it, yeah, just clap. You didn't need to boo. If you didn't clap, I know you didn't agree with it. He's like, boo, boo, boo. I want shenanigans, man. All right. Oh, you want shenanigans. You want to see this person get fucked up. All right. See? If you think this guy or woman should go over to this person's house, knock on the door and see if they do in fact have some sort of a problem, clap. Sons of bitches. For the legal record, I do not agree with that. If you think this person should put their house up on Zillow immediately, get the fuck out of there, pack up an overnight bag right now, let somebody else who looks like them sell the fucking house. Get to another district. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, there you go. I, I mean, listen, I, I, what I would do, honestly, is I would call somebody in law enforcement, tell them what you know, and ask their fucking advice. And I can tell you, I, I'm going to go out on the limb and say nobody in law enforcement is going to say to go over there and knock on the door <laughs> to see, just to get to the bottom of it, like... You think he's gonna do it anyway? Yeah. What is it about the way? Yeah. 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 He's already invested. Exactly. He's already invested. Like the way you're thinking. He, he, he felt bad. He, he's weak. He's a weak person. He's a neurotic asshole. Jesus Christ. But I mean, it was an he's saying it's too long, but it was entertaining. Oh, I love it. Oh, well, what the fuck are you bitching about? <laughs> I like to keep saying shenanigans. You mean his own fucking murder? <laughs> Would you call the first 48 the first 40 shenanigans? <laughs> Turn it into a musical? Everybody's getting fucking shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'd be the funniest cop ever. How was it tonight? Well, there's a lot of shenanigans out there. <laughs> Alright, petting zoos. Alright. What up, you red-headed fuck? Uh, on the 1022 Monday Morning Podcast, uh, you talked about taking your daughter to a petting zoo. Yeah, I didn't like that shit at all. I always kind of held her... I'm not a helicopter parent, but like when I'm, you're around fucking animals. 
Dude, you should have seen the look on these fucking goats' faces. They, they had had it. They fucking had it. There was an adult sitting there just stroking this fucking thing's beard. Like, you know? Like, that's gotta be the equivalent of robbing a biker gang's mohawk. Oh my god, oh my god, it's so, like, fuzzy. It's so fuzzy. Playing with his wallet chain. Like, what are you doing? These fucking things were just sitting there eating his hay with this fucking 600 yard stare like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking do something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. They kept trying to climb up on it to get away from him and shit, you know? You know, little kids, they just learned how to use their arms, so they don't know how to, they're like, they're fucking slamming their hands down on him. It's like a flare chop. All right. Anyways, a buddy of mine went to a petting zoo when he was five year old, five years old, and he forgot to wash his hands before he ate. Yeah, I made sure we had the fucking uh, the anti fucking goat antibiotics there. He ended up getting salmonella, giving him horrible diarrhea. He got permanent colon damage. I just said horrible diarrhea. And one goes woo. He got permanent colon dam damage and had awful shits for a decade. Yeah, well, I'm gonna fucking read this to my wife tonight. I tried to tell her, man. But you know I love my wife. She's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But oh, am I gonna read this to her? Uh, when he was 16, his doctor told him that they could solve the issue by removing his colon. Long story, he doesn't have a colon anymore, and he has to shit about 20 minutes after a meal because the shit doesn't have a storage unit anymore. <laughs> Love the podcast. Thank you for reading. <laughs> oh my God. What a perfect, that was perfect. How about a round of applause for Andrew Thembalis picking out these great, great emails. He's also the one that picks all the great music on the Thursday, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. All right, the last one before I have to go. This has been a lot of fun for me. Do you guys enjoy yourself? Yeah. All, right. all right, wait a minute. Wait, I don't think I have the rest of this one. Let's see here. Wait, this says moon landing divorces. Oh, wait, is it right here? Ah, there it is. There it is. Fucking idiot, Bill. All right, dear Billy Boy. Uh, I recently was watching a documentary about the Apollo, the Apollo program, uh, Main Guidance Computer, which was the smallest, most complicated computer that had ever been built, I imagine, up until then. The project was running behind schedule, so a lot of guys had to work extra long hours for it to be completed. I was shocked to hear them say that almost all of them got divorced after that and pretty much blamed it on the project. I seriously can't believe that anyone could divorce someone over that. I mean, like, your husband is literally working on the most important thing humanity has ever accomplished, and you're complaining about him not being around for a few months? What the fuck? Here's a link to the documentary if you want to watch. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Well, you know the deal. Listen, we all have our faults, okay? And women's faults, or is that they want the big house, but they think that you're still gonna be there to enjoy it. They don't get that there's a mortgage. They don't get that when you buy the big house, you're gonna be walking by a pool you never go in. They don't get that. They think you're just gonna sit there with them until they get bored in that house and want a bigger one. And that's what I do. Divide the crowd right down the middle. All right, listen, I'm out of time. Thank you so much for coming out to the podcast. I'll be signing my posters afterwards. Thank you for all coming down. God bless you. Go Red Sox. Good luck to the Diamondbacks next year unless they play my Red Sox. See you later. Thank you and go fuck yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Awkward ending here. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.